Over the past few years, Rocket Lab's electron booster recovery method has changed quite a bit. What once consisted of catching the first stage out of midair with a helicopter has shifted toward a more conservative yet still ambitious approach. Nowadays, it's somewhat common to see images of the booster floating in the ocean as the company works to retrieve it. This is what happened just days ago as part of the Four of a Kind mission, and based on what Rocket Lab has said, it seems to be working quite well for the company. Here I'll go more in depth into this recovery method, how it's changed over time, why it's so important, and more. Very recently, on January 31st, Rocket Lab launched another Electron mission that successfully deployed four Space Situational Awareness, or SSA, satellites for its customers. As part of that mission, they also planned to boost a recovery. Here, after the upper stage separated from the first, it began falling back toward Earth. Eventually, it deployed a parachute and splashed down in the ocean around 18 minutes into the mission. Not long after, Rocket Lab tweeted saying, Gone rocket fishing. This included a number of images of the recovery process. Specifically, Rocket Lab's recovery vessel locates and moves to the booster, where it then extracts the stage from the water for transport back to Rocket Lab's production complex for assessment. Despite the booster, which is full of exposed engines, internal tech, etc., being exposed to salt water, Rocket Lab has been trying to alter the booster to ensure this process creates minimal damage and inconvenience. There are some internal vehicle changes to improve its ability to keep water out of the areas where we don't want it, said Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck in an interview. We've taken this next opportunity to improve the water tightness of the vehicle. He also commented that the new method of getting electron out of the water makes it much simpler to recover and much less likely to damage the stage during recovery. Beck said the company is taking a methodical approach to reusability, making incremental steps to get it closer to full reuse. On one of the previous attempts, he said, I'm sure we'll learn something from this mission and we'll probably make some tweaks again to the next one. We're methodically walking step by step and taking the opportunity to get it right. He added that while reusability was an important economic lever for the company, it was not an urgent requirement. The company has previously emphasized that reusability would allow it to increase launch activity without having to scale up its factory. This highlights that while Rocket Lab is absolutely trying to reuse the first stage, it's not a top priority that the company depends on. This will likely contribute to the timeline and how long before we see a full reuse booster lift off. Looking at other reuse milestones, by now the company has already confirmed that the nine Rutherford engines can be refurbished after a splashdown and recovery. A while ago, Rocket Lab successfully test-fired a reused Rutherford first stage engine for the first time. The company conducted the full-duration, full-thrust test fire on the refurbished Rutherford engine at their engine test facility. The engine was previously successfully launched to space and returned to Earth during one of Rocket Lab's recovery missions. Despite being exposed to water, the refurbished Rutherford engine passed all the same rigorous acceptance tests Rocket Lab performs for every engine, including 200 seconds of engine fire and multiple restarts. Data from the test showed the engine produced full thrust of 21 kilonewtons within 1,000 milliseconds of ignition and performed at the same standard as a newly built Rutherford engine. It's also important to point out that this was without a host of changes to the booster to make it more waterproof. In the coming months, we can expect to see a few more booster splashdown attempts, each with a slightly upgraded electron booster. Until they get this process perfect, they will continue to try. All this being said, besides the progress made on the recent flight, the company has already tested and made clear that the engines, among other parts, can be reused. Interestingly, Rocket Lab actually tried a different recovery method before the one in use now. Originally, the plan was to catch the boosters out of midair with a helicopter. Unfortunately for the company, this proved to be a bit too inconsistent. Starting in May 2022, launch from Pad A at Rocket Lab Launch Complex 1 on New Zealand's Mahia Peninsula, the There and Back Again mission marked the company's 26th electron launch. This mission was a recovery mission where, for the first time, Rocket Lab attempted to catch Electron's first stage as it returned from space under parachutes using a helicopter. During the actual mission, after launching to space, the parachute deployed as intended. At 6,500 feet, Rocket Lab Sikorsky S-92 helicopter rendezvoused with the returning stage and used a hook on a long line to capture the parachute line. However, not long after the catch, Rocket Lab reported that the helicopter pilot detected different load characteristics than previously experienced in testing and decided to offload the stage for a successful splashdown. The stage was then loaded onto Rocket Lab's recovery vessel for transport back to the company's production complex for analysis and assessment for reflight as planned. This was a partial success for the company as they managed to hook onto the booster in the air, but not properly. Next, later that year in November, they tried another catch attempt during the Catch Me If You Can mission. Similar to the previous attempt, the goal is to catch Electron's booster out of midair using a helicopter. In this case, the company was once again unsuccessful. Specifically, Rocket Lab reported that they had planned to attempt a midair capture of Electron's first stage with a helicopter if conditions allowed. However, there were too many clouds, which in combination with a host of other reasons, stopped the pilots from attempting a catch. As a result, the booster ended up splashing down in the ocean. In regard to this failed attempt, at the time, Peter Beck commented, this turned out to be quite a happy turn of events. 
Electron survived in ocean recovery in remarkably good condition, and in a lot of cases, its components actually pass requalification for flight, he said. This failed attempt, combined with a promising ocean splashdown result, ended up changing the company's mind about recovery methods. One of the biggest conveniences to switching was the similarity between the two methods. In preparation for catch attempts, Rocket Lab worked to ensure the booster could survive reentry and slow itself down. Not long after stage separation, the booster is subjected to intense pressure and heat, experiencing flow temperatures in excess of 2400 degrees Celsius and reaching speeds of around 2300 meters a second during its descent. They call this potentially destructive process the wall. One of the ways they set out to survive the wall was by using a reaction control system, or RCS, to position the stage as it falls. Using the RCS, they're able to reorient the stage to an ideal angle as it descends. This tech, in addition to Rutherford heat shielding, the Droke parachute, and main parachute were already in place. Rocket Lab mainly just needed to waterproof the vehicle. When referencing the recovery process, the company said in a statement, as a result, Rocket Lab is moving forward with marine operations as the primary method of recovering Electron for reflight. This is expected to take the number of Electron missions suitable for recovery from around 50% to between 60 to 70% of missions, due to fewer weather constraints faced by marine recovery versus mid-air capture, which also reduces costs associated with helicopter operations, they said. To add to this, Peter Beck commented, by evolving Electron into a reusable launch vehicle, we plan to further increase our already steadily rising launch cadence, offering more launch availability to our customers at a time when space access is severely constrained globally. Reusability for small rockets is immensely challenging as they simply don't have the fuel margins that larger rockets have to enable propulsive landing. He continued by saying, In 2022, we proved that it was possible to rendezvous with a returning stage midair and get it on the helicopter hook. But if we can save ourselves the extra step by just plucking out of the water, we will. What the water landing does enable us to do is recover more vehicles because we don't have the constraints of the operations of the helicopter, he said. So financially, it's kind of the same, but we get to actually reuse more vehicles. By now, Rocket Lab is likely getting close to consistent booster refurbishment and reuse, something that would only add to the cadence and success of the vehicle. Even though they're also developing Neutron, which will be a more advanced reusable vehicle, Electron could still benefit both the company and its customers, something to look forward to in the coming years. Rocket Lab just landed another Electron booster in the ocean. For a while now, the company has been testing this process and working to waterproof the vehicle. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.